last class we had come across uh, the last 10 essentials of a valid acceptance today we'll be covering up the last two uh, essentials that is uh, acceptance must be may, uh, must be by the offeree is the 11th point the acceptance must be by the offeree a valid contract arises only if its acceptance is communicated by a person who has the authority to accept if it is communicated by unauthorized person it is not valid acceptance right now here what the uh, essential uh, is talking about is that a valid contract or a contract is going to be valid only if the acceptance is communicated by the offeree if there's any other person who is not authorized to communicate communicates then the offer stands invalid or the contract is invalid to whom the contract is made only that person has the complete right to tell his acceptance or his non-acceptance whether he accepts the offer or whether he rejects the offer it is the offeree who must communicate instead of the offeree if there's any other person who is not authorized to communicate the acceptance communicates it then the offer will stand as invalid or the contract will stand as in, invalid but if the offeree itself is going to appoint some person okay for example a uh, is willing to uh, sell his uh, car to mr b for rupees 10 lakh and mr b uh, and mr a asks if you accept this offer i want you to pay a down payment right uh, uh, a token advance or a down payment uh, within a week so mr b instead of expressing it orally what he says is he sends his servant okay he sends his servant and he communicates to mr a on behalf of me my, uh, my servant is going to come and uh, pay you the token advance confirming the contract or confirming the purchase of the car so here mr uh, b servant is an authorized person he himself is authorizing and communicating about this uh, third person to the offerer okay so in this case the servant is obliged to obey the orders of his master and pay the uh, advance or pay the down payment to mr a but in case if it is unauthorized if a third person who's not related to either a nor related to b comes into picture of contract and conveys his acceptance then such acceptance is invalid in the eyes of law let's look at this case powell versus lee who is powell in this case he is a candidate who applied for the post of a headmaster in a school now here there is a uh, uh, interview process or a selection process happening for the headmaster or principal for a particular school now powell is a candidate who has applied for the post and also he is uh, selected for the post okay uh, he has done well but the uh, the committee or the panel members whoever has conducted this uh, selection process have selected powell but then have still not communicated to him they have kept the decision on hold but lee is a person who is a part of the selection committee the selection of powell was an insider news only known to that panel members only but then lee was not authorized to communicate the same news to mr powell in his individual capacity he is not authorized at all it is as a panel officially they would announce it and then it would be a valid offer but then what lee did was as a part of appointing committee he informed this insider news about the appointment or the selection of mr powell to him but then he did not he was not com uh, authorized to communicate the decision in his individual capacity and then subsequently the appointing authority cancelled his selection so since they kept it on hold automatically after a few days they cancelled this uh, uh, selection of mr powell so they cancelled the entire decision so then what lee did is he brought a case or he filed a case against uh, the appointing committee or the appointing selection committee of the school in the court of law and told there they have the they have breached the contract okay they are not uh, abided by the norms of the contract about the 
cancellation of the appointment of the committee. They told me that I am selected, but then now they have changed their decision. This is what his argument was in the court of law. Let's see what the court says. Court says there must be a notice of acceptance from the contracting party. Now, how can uh, Powell file a case against the uh, selection committee of the school? Did the selection committee officially announce to him? Did they officially give him an offer letter? No, nothing in legal notice or nothing in legal power did the selection committee perform their conditions or duties towards Powell. Okay, it was just an insider news that was leaked to him. Based on this insider news, Mr. Powell cannot file a case against the court or cannot, uh, cannot face a, uh, file a case against the selection authority. So the court says information from an unauthorized person is an insufficient, is an insufficient and it is considered as overhearing from behind the door. Now we know that Mr. Lee told it as a insider information he leaked out where he is not an authorized person to do so. So therefore the, uh, the essential says that the acceptance must be by the offeree. In this case who is the offeree? The entire selection uh, the offer is the uh, Powell, but the offerer is the entire selection committee. Until and unless they give him an offer letter with all the employment conditions, it is Powell who has to give his acceptance. Is that clear? So, Mr. Lee has given his uh, uh, leaked the decision of the selection committee in an unauthorized manner. Therefore, the court dismissed the case that the selection committee is not responsible uh, for you hearing the insider news about the school committee. Hope you have understood this case. The acceptance must be by the offeree. So, in this case, the offer only was not given legally. So, legally there is no acceptance that has to be abided by the offer. Number 12 or the twelfth essential of a valid acceptance is, it may be expressed or implied. As we always know, even in the offer, we studied this essential, right? It may be expressed or implied. Orally, you are telling you want to sell something or you want to buy certain product or by your behavior or by your conduct, you are conveying the same. Even in the acceptance also applies the same. When acceptance is expressed through words, spoken or written, it is express acceptance. So, orally I am telling, yes, I agree to purchase your watch. Yes, I agree to purchase the car. Orally I am accepting. Or written means I write it in a form of an agreement. Or in a, uh, in a written format or in a written statement, I give my acceptance. But when acceptance is given by conduct, it is implied acceptance. So, in implied acceptance, as we know, implied offer, there is nothing communicated orally or written, but by my behavior or but by my conduct, the other party understands that I have accepted the offer. Let's look into the case of V. Rav versus A. Rav. Now, who is V. Rav? She is a widow who has promised to settle some immovable property to her niece if the niece, that is A. Rav, stayed with her in her residence. Now, this case talks about a widow and her niece. Who is the widow? A, uh, v. Rao is the widow in this case and A. Rao is the, her niece. So, Miss, uh, Mrs. V. Rao, what happens to her is she is a widow and she, she has a, a lot of immovable property in her name and she is old and she uh, tells that she does not want to pass over this entire property and the will, everything to any other person. But she decided to uh, put a condition uh, if anybody has to take over this property, she decided her niece to be the person. The condition was her niece has to come and stay with Veera all her entire life until the day of her death. If she is going to stay with her, then the entire property of Veera will belong legally 
in the hands of A Rao. So that was the condition laid down by V Rao that she has to come and stay with her because she is uh, maybe she is alone in her home and uh, the immovable property is in her name and she wanted her to stay with her until her death. And so V A Rao, what happened to her nieces? She agrees to the terms and conditions of V Rao and then she comes and stays with her until her death. So it was decided that it was held that the niece was entitled to the property. If you can notice in this case, the niece never told about uh, her acceptance orally. Yes, I will come and stay with you. Then you can transfer my uh, transfer your property after your death. She never gave her a written statement. But yes, her conduct and her behavior gave or communicated to the widow about her acceptance. Is that clear? So, this is called as implied acceptance. By behavior or by conduct, I am communicating my acceptance. So, once Veera, that is the widow, uh, died, the entire property was automatically transferred in the will or in the name of the niece. Hope you have understood the last essential. It may be express or implied. So, next and the last topic for the topic of acceptance is revocation of acceptance. Revocation means cancellation. Okay, cancellation of acceptance. So, according to section 5 of the Indian Contract Act, acceptance may be revoked at any time before the communication of acceptance is complete as against the acceptor but not afterwards. So, if you have to, uh, let's say A has uh, offered to sell his car to Mr. B and B has accepted uh, the, to purchase the car for rupees 10 lakh and we saw uh, just uh, just back uh, the example that he sends a servant uh, as a uh, to, uh, to pay the token advance or to pay the down payment. Now, when can Mr. B cancel or revoke his acceptances anytime before his servant takes the money and uh, and that money reaches uh, Mr. A. Anytime before that uh, money reaches, Mr. B has to communicate his revocation. But once the servant submits the money or gives the money into the hands of A, then Mr. A, uh, Mr. B cannot back out of his obligation to fulfill the contract. So, when can Mr. B or when can the offerer or the offeree cancel or revoke the acceptance is when before the communication of the acceptance is completed. Is that clear? So, in this example, before the token advance was paid, he was, he has the power to cancel that offer or cancel his own acceptance. But once the money reaches the other party, there is no point of backing out. Revocation of acceptance amounts to withdrawal of the acceptance to the proposal by the offer himself. So, in this example, first B only communicated to, the, to A, yes, I agree to buy your car at rupees 10 lakhs and I will send my servant to pay the uh, down payment. So, he is only communicating here. Again, before he, if he only wants to cancel or revoke that agreement or that acceptance, he has to communicate it before the acceptance is confirmed once again. Okay. So, the offer himself accepts it and the offer himself again rejects or revocates the acceptance. Let us look at the example here. A proposes by a letter sent by post to sell his house to B. So, here in this case A wants to sell his house to Mr. B. B accepts the proposal by a letter sent by post. Now, B may revoke his acceptance any time before the letter communicating it reaches A but not afterwards. Now, here A wants to sell his house to B. Now, how has he sent this offer? Through a letter by post he has sent. And this letter has reached Mr. B. Now, B accepts the proposal by a letter sent by post. Now, he has accepted the letter, read the letter and he has understood the terms and conditions and he has agreed to it or accepted, accepted to the offer. Now, 
when can mr b revoke or cancel this offer is now he has to write back on this letter right that he has accepted the offer he has to write back and the letter has to reach back to mr a again so in this travel time or in this uh, time taken for the letter to reach back to a that is the time available for mr b to revoke his acceptance any time before the letter communicating it reaches a but let's say the letter has reached mr a and then mr b wants to revoke it or cancel it it is not possible he has legally abided or uh, co communicated his acceptance to mr a hope you have understood what is the meaning of revocation of acceptance with an example next are the following conditions or the circumstances for the rejection so under what circumstances can an acceptance be revoked the acceptance can be revoked by the failure of the accepted to fulfill a condition precedent now in uh, in the previous example when i told if you accept to purchase my car okay because i want to sell my car to you if you agree to the terms and conditions then within one week i want you make the i want you to make a down payment okay so now this is a condition to my offer if you accept it then you have to first make the down payment now if mr b either accepts the offer that he yes i want to purchase your car but then fails to make the down payment within one week then the offer or the acceptance will stand revoked is that clear within that time period if mr b is not able to fulfill the condition of making the down payment then mr b's acceptance will be revoked or cancelled is that clear second condition is by death or insanity of the proposer now either of the person okay uh, the proposer the person whoever is giving the offer itself if the person itself dies or if the person itself becomes mentally unstable or mentally is ill okay in that case even though my acceptance i have given because the proposer himself is uh, has died or has become mentally ill then the acceptance will stand invalid or cancelled third condition when it is not in a reasonable time and manner so in this example we saw that he has to if he accepts he has to make the down payment by one week so that is the time period okay and he has to make the down payment by paying the sum of money now if mr b says after that one week time has passed okay the time limit has crossed over or the time limit has lapsed then he is sending his servant to pay the amount it is not valid in the eyes of law because he is not abiding by the uh, terms or conditions prescribed by the offerer whatever conditions or whatever prescribed manner he has put forward the same must be abided by the offeree okay so the third condition under which the acceptance can be revoked is when it is not in a reasonable time and manner even if the time lapses it is called as revocation or cancel or the manner maybe in terms of uh, he is not paying the money he is just saying accepted that still stands as revoked or cancellation of the acceptance fourth condition the acceptance can be revoked by the rejection of offer so the simple and the basic way of cancelling a acceptance is uh, the person has offered you something and you reject it is that clear so that is the simple and the most basic form of rejection or revocation of offer how i reject the original offer is that clear he is offering me to sell uh, or purchase uh, an asset or a house and i tell no i am not agreeing to the terms and conditions i do not want to purchase your house so outrightly the offeree is communicating his rejection or his disagreement to the offer is that clear so number 
it can be made by supervening impossibility that means uh, let's say for a trade right uh, if the uh, the if they're trading in rice or ragi or something whatever goods they're trading in right uh, when the offer is made it is valid and the acceptance also is given uh, under the proper conditions and the manner everything is done well but then by the time of executing the offer in by the both the parties offer and the offeree subsequently it becomes impossible to perform let's say the goods uh, whatever i promised to sell you it can be ragi jowar or any goods that i promised to sell you i was not able to cultivate it or maybe i have cultivated but then there was a flood is that clear there is a natural calamity over there so that is subsequent or supervening impossibility so it is not the fault of offerer it is not the fault of offeree but it is just naturally what has happened that is uh, the natural circumstance that has made the acceptance revoked or has made the acceptance cancelled or the entire contract only becomes impossible to perform or continue is that clear so today we have learned uh, we have completed the topic of acceptance we have studied we have studied 12 different types of essentials to acceptance starting with meaning who can accept the offer essentials of a valid acceptance it must be communicated to the offerer we looked at brogden versus metropolitan railway company second we looked at it must be in response to the offer third it must be made within reasonable time fourth it must be made before the offer lapses or revoked it cannot be made through silence it must be in a prescribed manner or a reasonable mode seven it must be absolute and conditional we looked at two cases under this essential one is neil versus merit and jordan versus norton eight a mental acceptance is ineffectual nine acceptance can be made for the renewal of rejected offer ten the acceptor must be aware of the proposal at the time of the offer we took the example of case versus lalman shukla versus gauri dat and today we looked at the acceptance must be made by the offeree anybody who is not authorized cannot convey his acceptance we looked at the case pavel versus lee and the last essential was it may be expressed or implied we looked at the case widow versus the her niece and we looked at the last one revocation of acceptance how to reject or cancel an acceptance so these were the five different conditions the acceptance can be revoked by the failure of the acceptor to fulfill a condition precedent two by death or insanity three when it is not made within the reasonable time and manner four the acceptance can be revoked by rejection of the original offer and five it can be made by the supervening impossibility hope you have understood the topic of uh, meaning of acceptance and the uh, essentials of acceptance and the revocation of acceptance